All of the assets and the code will be in the description. So first open up a new Game Maker project, go to File, Preferences, Sprite Editor, make sure the default sprite origin is set to middle center and the default sprite animation speed is set to 15. Click on Apply, then OK. Now we're going to import all of the assets, so drag and drop all of the assets of the game into the sprites folder, then click on Save and click on the idle animation for the player. We're going to set the frames per second to 9 and we are going to change the collision mask. So click on collision mask, change the mode to manual and reduce the size of the collision mask of the player a little bit. Next we're going to create a tileset. So right click on the tilesets folder, click on create and select tileset. Name it T ground for tileset ground. Then we're going to assign the sprite of the tileset to this object, so click on S tileset, and by default the size of the grid will be 16 by 16. We are going to change it to 32 by 32, and we are going to use the auto tiling feature. So click on auto tiling and add a new 47 tiles template. Now we are going to assign each tile to the template. So first click on the tile on the bottom right of the tileset, and next we just have to click on every tile one by one to assign them to the correct position. Doing this will allow us to draw directly within the room editor with our tile sets without having to manually choose which tile to draw. So now we are going to go in the room editor. So click on the rooms folder and click on room one. And here first we are going to assign the background. So click on the background layer, click on no sprite, select the S background sprite. And we are going to change the size of the room to be the same as our background. So change it to 960 by 540 and we are going to add a camera. So open the viewports and camera toggle. Click on enable viewports. Click on viewport 0 and set it to visible. And we are going to set the camera width to 640 and the height to 360, which is the resolution of our game. And we are going to set the viewport to be double that, so 1280 by 720, which will be the size of our window. Next we can close this. And now we are going to add our tile sets into the room. So add a new tile set layer, which is the third button, and rename it ground. Next, we need to assign our tile set to this layer. So select the T ground tile set. And we're going to create a level thanks to the auto tiling feature. So click on the libraries button and select auto tile one. And now we can draw in the room with our tiles. We can also control the size of our brush thanks to this button. So now I'm going to draw a simple level. And now we're going to create our player object. So go back to the Assets tab, right click on the Objects folder, click on Create, Object, and name it All Player. Next, we're going to assign the idle sprite to our object, and we're going to change the collision mask from same as sprite to be the idle sprite, so that the collision mask doesn't change when we change the sprite of the player. Now we're going to add the Create event, and we're going to set up some variables. We'll use one variable to set the movement speed of the player, and then we'll have two more variables to apply that movement when the player presses the move buttons. So the x speed variable will control the movement on the horizontal axis and the y speed variable will control the movement on the vertical axis. Next we're going to add a step event and we're going to start by setting up three local variables. The first local variable is x direction which will return 1 if the player wants to go to the right or minus 1 if he wants to go to the left and 0 if he doesn't move. Next we set a variable to check if the player is pressing the space button which is the key we use to jump and finally we're setting a third variable that will tell us whether the player is standing on the ground or not. To do that we're going to use a function called place meeting which returns whether two objects are colliding or not at the given position. So we are giving it the current position of the player and we're adding one to the vertical axis to check the pixel just below the feet of the player. And we're going to check if it collides with the all wall object. This is the object we will create to manage the collisions of the game. So let's create it right now. So open up the asset browser, right click on the objects folder, create object, name it all wall. And we're going to assign it a simple sprite. So right click on the sprites folder, create sprite. Click on resize sprite and make it 32 by 32, which is the same size as our tile set. Click on apply, then click on edit image, pick a random color and pick the fill tool. And then just fill the entire sprite with this color. Then we're going to adjust the opacity a little bit to make it transparent. So double click on the default layer and reduce the opacity. We're also going to rename it to S wall. And we can close this window. And we also need to set the origin to top left. 
go back to the room window and we're going to create a new layer that contains the wall objects so create a new instance layer and name it walls so now we are going to draw over our tiles with wall objects so hold the alt button and place them where you want in the room and we can resize them by just dragging the sides of the box like this with that method you don't need to cover inside of the walls where the player will never be able to go so now that it's done, we're going to hide this layer. So click on the little eye on the walls layer and go back to the O player step event. So next we'll add the line of code that changes the direction of the sprite of the player depending on the actual direction he's moving in. So to do that, we set the image X scale of the player to be one or minus one depending on the direction. And we're going to modify the X speed and Y speed variables depending on the direction the player is moving to. So we set the x speed variable to be the x direction, so 1 or minus 1, multiplied by the speed. So if the player wants to go right, he will move by 4 pixels in the right direction. And we're going to increment the y speed variable every step by 1. This will make the player be pulled down by gravity. And next, we're going to apply those speeds to the x and y position of the player. We also want to check if the player is jumping. And if that's the case, we're going to replace the y speed of the player to be minus 15. Since to go up, we need to lower the Y value. So the lower this number will be, the higher the player will jump. So if the player presses the space button, his Y speed will go to minus 15. And every step after that, it will go up by one. So he will get slowly pulled down by gravity again. We can test it. So go back to the room, go to the instances layer and place a player object and then launch the game. Now we can see that our player is being pulled down by gravity. It goes through walls because we haven't implemented the collision yet. And when we press the space button, it jumps before being pulled down again. So we've basically recreated Flappy Bird. So now we're going to add the collisions. So go back to the step event. And first of all, we are going to update the sprite of the player depending on what he's doing. Because right now he's only being in the idle animation. So we are going to add this code before the jump check. If the player's x direction is different than zero, so if the player is moving to the right or to the left, we're going to change his sprite to be the running animation, and else we're going to set it to the idle animation. But we only want to do that if the player is on the ground. So we're just going to put all of this inside of a condition that checks whether the player is on the ground or not. This way, if the player is not on the ground, he won't be able to jump. And we are going to set his sprite to be the jumping animation. This way, anytime he's in the air, he will be in the jumping animation. And finally, we need to add the code to check the collision with the wall object and to stop the player if he's colliding with one. So we can add this code before changing the position of the player. So we're checking if the position the player wants to move into in the horizontal axis is colliding with a wall or not. If it's colliding with a wall, we're going to set his speed to zero on the horizontal axis. And we're going to do the same on the vertical axis. So we just copy this code and put it before changing the position on the Y axis. And we are going to remove this and put y speed instead and change x speed to y speed everywhere so let's try it so we can see that it works so now let's add some more control to the camera to be able to move inside of the whole room so create a new object and call it all camera place it inside of the room in the instances layer and in the create event we are going to set up two basic variables that will give us the width and the height of our camera and in the step event we are going to set the position of the camera to be centered on the position of the player. So these two local variables will be the new position of the camera, which is the position of the player minus half of the width and height of the camera since the origin point of the camera is in the top left corner. So if you want it to be centered on the player, we need to remove half of the size of the camera on both axes. And next we're going to call a new function to set the position of the camera to the new position we calculate, which is the camera set view pose function. And we need to give it the camera we are using, which is the view zero camera, the one we set up in the room settings before, and the new position. So if we launch it now, we can see that it works. The camera is following the player, but there are a few problems. For example, it goes out of the room. If we are on the ground, half of the screen will be black and it's useless, so we need to fix it. So to do that, we're going to use a new function, which is the clamp function. We give it the same value as before, but we tell it to not go below zero and to not go over the borders of the room. This way, xcam and ycam variables will still give us the centered position on the player, but with some limits that will forbid it from going outside of the room. So this is what it looks like now, which is much better. But we can also see that the camera is very snappy. It doesn't feel very natural because it moves directly to the position of the player every frame. So we can add some code to smooth it out. And to do that, we're going to use the lerp function. 
So first we just retrieve the current position and we set up two new variables using the lerp function to which we give the current position of the camera and the position we want to go to and an amount of 0.1 which means instead of going directly to the position of the player the camera will move 10% of the way there every step so it will go faster when the distance is higher and slower when the distance is lower which will give it a smoother effect so replace x cam and y cam by the new x and new y variable and we now have a more fluid camera the last thing we'll do here is to add some parallaxing effect to the background to make it look like the background is more far away and we just need to add this code which will change the x and y position of the background layer to the new position of the camera multiplied by a number that's below one this means that instead of having the background be stuck in the same position during all of the game the background will also move to new positions depending on where the camera is which will give it the parallaxing effect and now when we move the camera we can see that the background also moves so the final thing we'll do here is to set the game to full screen and we can now create our coin object so create a new object call it o coin assign the coin sprite to this object and we're going to place a few of them in the room and we're going to add a collision event in the o player object so click on new event collision object select the o coin object and in that event we're going to add this code which will play a sound and destroy the coin when we touch it you could also increase the score of the player or anything you want in this event we're also going to modify the collision mask of the coin so go to the coin sprite click on collision mask change the mode to manual and reduce the size of the collision mask and we're also going to add a new event on our player object that will allow us to test more easily so add a new event click on key pressed and select the letter r and we're just going to restart the game so now if we launch the game we can see that it works we can collect coins and if we press the r button it will restart the game now there's a small optimization that we can do that's not very apparent in this game because the numbers are so small but it's in the step event of the player object with this code in some situations the player will not be able to have a pixel perfect collision with the wall because we're only checking if x plus the speed which is 4 collides with the wall and if that's the case we just set the speed to 0 but maybe x plus 1 would still not be colliding with the wall which there will be a gap between the player and the wall to fix that we just need to add a new loop inside of this condition that will add 1 or minus 1 depending on the direction of the player to the x position while there is still a gap between the player and the wall to check that we use the place meeting function but instead of giving it the x speed variable we just give it the sign of the x speed variable so it will be 1 or minus 1 depending on the direction of the player and as long as x plus 1 or minus 1 does not collide with the wall we're going to add 1 or minus 1 to the position of the player and we can do the same thing for the vertical axis and this should give us pixel perfect collision on both axes and that's all we need we now have a working platformer if you like this video feel free to subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want me to do the same for another type of game.